It started to happen gradually. I would walk into a room and say something, and no one would notice. I would say, will you turn the TV down, please? And nothing would happen. So I would get louder. Will you turn the TV down, please? Finally, I would have to go over and turn the TV down myself. And then I started to notice it more and more. I would walk my son to school and his teacher would say, Jake, who is that with you? And he would say, nobody. Granted, he is just five, but nobody? <laughs> One night, a group of us got together and we were celebrating the return of a friend from England. Janice had just gone on this fabulous trip and she was going on and on about the hotel she stayed in and and I looked around at the other women at the table. I had put my makeup on in the car on the way there. I had on an old dress because it was the only thing clean and I had put my unwashed hair in a banana clip and I was feeling pretty darn pathetic. And then Janice turned towards me and she said, I brought this for you. And it was a book on the great cathedrals of Europe. I didn't understand. And then I read her inscription. She wrote, with admiration for the greatness of what you are building when no one sees. You see, you can't name the names of the people who built the great cathedrals. Over and over again, looking at these mammoth works, and you scan down to the names, and it says, builders unknown, unknown, unknown. They completed things not knowing that anyone would notice. There's a story about a builder who was carving a tiny bird inside a beam that would be covered over by a roof. And someone came up to him and said, why are you spending so much time on something that no one will ever see? And it's reported that the builder said, because God sees. They trusted that God saw everything. They gave their whole lives for a work, a mammoth work that they would never see finished. They showed up day after day. Some of these cathedrals took over 100 years to build. That was more than one working man's lifetime. Day after day. And they made personal sacrifice for no credit. Showing up for a job they would never see finished. For a building their names would never be on. One writer went so far as to say, no great cathedrals will ever be built again because so few people are willing to sacrifice to that degree. I closed the book and it was as if I heard God saying to me, I see you. You are not invisible to me. No sacrifice is too small for me to notice. I see every cupcake baked and every sequin that's put on and I smile over every one of them. I see every tear of disappointment when things don't go the way that you want them to go. But remember, you're building a cathedral and it will not be finished in your lifetime. And sadly, you will never get to live there, but if you build it well, I will. At times, my invisibility feels like an affliction to me, but not 
a disease that is erasing my life. It is the cure for the disease of self-centeredness. It is the antidote for my own pride. It's okay that they don't see. It's okay that they don't know. I don't want my son to tell the friend who he's bringing home from college, you won't believe what my mom does. She gets up at 4 a.m. And, and she bakes pies and she hand bakes the turkey and she presses the linens. Even if I do all those things, I don't want him to say that. I want him to want to come home. And secondly, I want him to tell his friend, you're gonna love it here. It's okay that they don't see. Now, to keep myself focused on what is important, I need God's help. I pray every day for the strength needed to be a mother. <laughs>